Hello and welcome to GC360, where news comes full circle. I'm Jessica Vickers. And I'm Cole Rogers. On today's episode of GC360, flooding at the Greenway, what can be done about it? Details on the fraternity that got disciplined for serving alcohol at an unregistered party. And how does it feel? Why would these students volunteer to get tased? Those stories in a moment, but first, on Tuesday, Georgians will be joining voters around the country to cast ballots in presidential primaries. It's called Super Tuesday. GC360's Angela Morian takes a closer look at Milledgeville's place in Georgia's primary. Following South Carolina and Nevada, Georgia is getting ready to vote on Super Tuesday when 16 states or territories hold presidential primaries or caucuses. On Saturday, Nevada Democrats got behind Hillary Clinton as South Carolina Republicans threw their support to Donald Trump. Early voting has been underway at the courthouse for several weeks. We're having the average of about 80 a day, so we're up to about 358 right now which is a low turnout for us. Officials believe the low turnout is a result of many not understanding what a presidential primary is. But Rogers hopes for a larger turnout this week. We anticipate a lot of action next week after South Carolina votes on Saturday. Both city and college political leaders remain divided on their choice for president. I'm trying to whittle it down to see who's actually going to be in the race, but um, from what it's looking like, I'm going to vote for Marco Rubio. I'm for Donald Trump. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. Some are still deciding where their loyalties lie. Actually, I'm not real sure, but I think it's probably going to be Hillary. Everybody's saying Donald, Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders, but I feel like that's just going through like the publicity, whoever's like on the news more. So I'm not sure yet. Well, I still need to do some research, but I have been in between uh, Bernie and Hillary. Some Republican supporters of Donald Trump hope his business success will improve the national and local economies. One thing I like about Trump is that he understands business. And right now, this country is really suffering. We need industry, good basic industry, and we need jobs for the middle and lower class people in Milledgeville. However, in the 2012 presidential election, Baldwin was one of the 34 Georgia counties that went Democratic. This year might garner similar results. Are you talking about Hillary Clinton? I think she understands how to talk with people intelligently. And I think she thinks before she opens her mouth. He was talking about she, she's like the only option. For Georgia college students, opinions lean a little differently. In a race where many college students nationwide loudly feel the burn, the Bobcats seem split down the aisle. In an unscientific GC360 online poll, 57% of 721 total respondents chose a Republican candidate. Marco Rubio was the largest vote-getter with 243 votes, and Bernie Sanders came in a close second with 227 votes. Hillary Clinton had a surprisingly small count of only 10. Not a lot of political activism is happening on campus, but students can still request their absentee ballots by Friday, February 26th, for their votes to count in Tuesday's primary. I just think people need to get out and vote. It's our country and we need to stand up for what we believe. Reporting for GC360, I'm Angela Mori. Georgia college students can prepare for a new SGA administration coming this May. SGA presidential candidates brave the overcrowded tabling frenzy by the fountain during homecoming week in hopes of gaining as many student votes as possible. Over 3,000 students cast their ballots this year, and GC360's Candace Hill covered the race until the final vote was tallied. Three Georgia college juniors faced off for student government president in an election demonstrating the true value of every vote. It's time to wake up, people! First-timers Laura Ahrens and Charles Morgan joined one of the last year's candidates, Barrett Stanley, in the tight race for the powerful seat. A day before the results were revealed, Ahrens issued a statement expressing confidence. 
I feel like I have definitely been getting my message out. I hope that the decision is easy for the students. Aarons did win, but only by a six-vote margin over Stanley. Morgan finished third, 606 votes behind Aarons. Aarons' six-step platform encouraged many students. Her professionalism and confidence especially impressed freshman Allison Baker. I voted for her because she seemed very um, professional and ready for the, to take on any, any action that she could do. And I believe that she would be the best candidate. While Aarons did secure the victory, Stanley also attracted loyal supporters. I know that Barron has a passion for this school, um, and I've been able to witness that firsthand, especially not only talking to me, but in talking to tour groups when they come. I've been on tours with Barrett, and I, I can see his passion for this college, and I know that he would have done great things for the school. At the end of May, current SGA President Jawan Jackson will hand off his position to Aarons, his vice president in his year's presidential term. Reporting for GC360, I'm Candace Hill. Current President Pro Tempore Terrell Davis also beat Altami Slow for the Office of Vice President by 192 votes. And Charlie Faber, who ran unopposed, will be next year's treasurer. Now joining us in studio for her first live interview since the election is President-elect Laura Ahrens. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hi. I'm doing very well. Thank Good. you. Good. Well, I think something we all want to know is how does it feel to be elected SGA president? Yeah, it just feels very, very good, honestly. It's just so rewarding to work so hard um, for the students for three years in this organization and for everything to really come full circle and everything to pay off in the end. And I'm so excited to continue working with the students for the school. Yeah. Now, during your campaign, I know you highlighted six points that you really wanted to expand on if you won. Well, now that you've won, could you maybe um, name some of those and talk about the ones that you're most excited about? Yeah, I would say the projects that I'm most excited to start tackling are the ones that were most that most students seem to be excited about during my campaign and also that I think are the most relevant right now. And those include parking and transportation and those projects. Uh, we're actually having meetings, uh, you know, bi-weekly and weekly with even with some officials for parking. So we're tackling the, that project. And then also um, we have a lot of building renovations coming up and I want to make sure that as buildings are renovated in the next year, year and a half, one um, fun fact being Centennial, the Centennial Center, I want to make sure that these spaces are being utilized uh, to the benefit of the students as best that we can make that happen. Good. Now, I know students will agree with you 100% on the parking issue, like <laughs> no doubt. I know I do. But I think something that I want to know, and I think a lot of students would like to know, is how can the student body voice what they want to be done on campus to SGA? Uh, there are actually a few ways to do that. One, by going on our website, sga.gcsu.edu. We actually have a few buttons, one being, I have a question, or I have a concern or complaint. And you can actually answer the, that online, and they'll send the email straight to us, and we can start working on that. But any student um, at all at the university is free to come by the SGA office, honestly, whenever you want. Uh, and that is in the Student Activity Center, the first floor, uh, which is the same building as Magnolia Ballroom is in. So those are a few ways that students can voice their opinions to us at SGA. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming thank in, you. Laura, and congrats on the election. Thank you. The new year was not kind to the Oconee River Greenway. Heavy rains caused serious flooding, inconveniencing parkgoers, and raising questions about why the park is so often out of commission. GC360's Rhea Adelike got the inside look. This is what the Greenway looks like now. And this is what it looked like a few short weeks ago. Hello, my name is Rhea Delake from GC360. I am here at the Greenway to see about the recent flooding that's been going on. Major flooding happened around New Year's. Volunteers and Greenway board members did what they could to clean up. But subsequent rains put walkways underwater again. It turns out that the Greenway Board can't do much about the flooding. Actually, the, the park was built in a flood zone by design. Uh, as far as flooding is concerned, it's something that we just, we, we understand that it's going to flood from time to time. The flooding disappointed people. John Mazzola likes to take his two dogs, Rascal and Sassy, for walks at the Greenway. Well, we love to get out and walk and we couldn't. Um, our days were messed up. My puppies didn't understand. Uh, I actually knew that when they were projecting all that rain that um, we wouldn't be able to walk for a while. 
and our routine would be messed up. Volunteers came to the rescue then. Um, basically, to clean it, we just go down with brooms and flat nose shovels and scrape the muck and mud off of the um, off the sidewalks and off the boardwalks. And once it's cleared, we open it back up, and another good rain or two washes any of the uh, leftover sludge off, and you're good to go. John Mazzola is glad the park is usable again. But we knew that after a period of time, the river will recede, and we can come back to normal. Walter Reynolds wants people to know that getting information about conditions at the park is easy. Be patient with us when it comes to any cleanup efforts. Uh, we welcome volunteers who would like to help us out with any cleanup efforts. Uh, the best thing to do, though, is to follow us on Facebook and to uh, keep up with OconeeRiverGreenway.org. But with the Greenway located in a floodplain, it's probably only a matter of time before some trails and walkways will be underwater again. This is Rio Delicate reporting from GC360. After the break, Lauren will be here with her view of Chicago. And the consequences of an unauthorized frat party. We'll tell you what happened at the town hall meeting that was all about Pi Kappa Alpha. Stay with us. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. ran wild across the Georgia College campus a few weeks ago after a particularly rambunctious party at the Pi Kappa Alpha House got out of hand. So when a town hall meeting was called, concerned students packed Peabody Auditorium and GC360 was there and Anna Smith reports. Pi Kappa Alpha very publicly apologized for throwing an unauthorized party that resulted in four individuals being treated at a Coney Regional Medical Center. The fraternity was put on social probation for the semester but it will be allowed to hold two non-alcoholic social events. Jimmy Shea, senior member of Pike, spoke about how the event changed the way he views alcohol. Seeing um, how our actions affected you know, people in the community and on campus, it really opened my eyes to how important and how much more responsibility and accountability uh, we need to hold ourselves to. Officials at the town hall said, the women taken to the hospital had dangerously high blood alcohol levels. They also said toxology reports showed no date rape drugs present in their systems. That was Anna Smith reporting. And now it's time for a change of pace. And that can only mean entertainment. Jai is back, but she's got a new co-anchor this semester. Let's take it to the entertainment team. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. I'm Veronica Ulysses. And I'm Jai Fitzgerald. Back at you with one word. Chicago. The multiple Tony Award winning production is getting its own GC reboot. The theater and dance departments have teamed up to put on the production in Russell Auditorium. GC 360's Mary Henderson gives us a look into the hard work that has gone into this production. Chicago is coming to Milledgeville. 
This week, the Georgia College Theater Department is putting on several shows featuring show-stopping songs and dance numbers from the award-winning musical. Um, this is my first musical I've directed at Georgia College. Um, so it is really exciting. We've got 23 people in the cast. It feels really huge. These talented Bobcats, among several others, have been working tirelessly to make sure this production is one that will be remembered. Uh, we've been rehearsing since a week before the semester started. Uh, so going on two months. We have rehearsal Monday through Friday and now Monday through Sunday up until the show um, from 5 until 9 every day and we've worked over 15 to 20 hours each week on this show. It's just been my entire life has been sleeping, eating and breathing Chicago the Musical. It's definitely been challenging but it's definitely a rewarding process especially to, to the point we are now in the rehearsal process we can see the show coming together and that's a good feeling. Chicago the Musical began on Wednesday night and will continue throughout the week. So head out to Russell Auditorium at 8 on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to catch the show, or catch the last show on Sunday at 2 p.m. Come and see Chicago. It has music, dance. Reporting for GC360, I'm Mary Henderson. That looks like quite a show, don't you think, Cole? Yeah, I think it looks great. But I'm really, you know, I want to know what our reviewer, Lauren Hargrave, has to say about the show. So let's bring her in. Lauren? Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all having a great day. But now, I'd like to shed some light on our play, Chicago. Now, if you didn't know otherwise, GC360 is putting on Chicago right now in Russell Auditorium, which conveniently takes place in the exact same year that Russell was built, 1926. If you didn't know, Chicago take, uh, is about Roxy Hart, who shoots the man that she was cheating on her husband with, and now she is put in jail, and she has to hire big-time defense lawyer Billy Flynn to get her off the death sentence. Now. About once a year, I'd say. I'm pretty strict when it comes to theatrical critiquing. And about once a year, the theatrical department here at Georgia College really, really impresses me. That being said, this play was it. I was so taken off guard by the talent that was shown by the department here. And the theater, the production, the lights, the sound, it was all beautiful. I was really impressed. Something that really stood out to me was the set design. That was amazing. If you don't know anything about the show, though, I warn you, this is a PG-13 show, so do with that what you will. I don't want to reveal too much, because I highly suggest go, everyone go see this play if you weren't otherwise planning on it. The play's music is provided by GC's 360s, GC360s, oops, goodness gracious, I'm so sorry. It's provided by GC's own jazz band, whose performance is highly indicative of the original music. I stand in the theater, mouth agape because in some of the bigger numbers, as a lover of musical theater myself, I became overwhelmed with the combination of music and choreography and lighting. And I'll end with this. And that is who I'm awarding the star performance, and that's Will Washburn as Billy Flynn. He really steals the stage in every scene he's in, and his pinnacle number, in my opinion, We Both Reach for the Gun, was my favorite and one of the best produced. All in all, go see it. It's a great production. They worked really hard and everyone will enjoy it. That's all for you today. Come back next week and I'll tell you what I thought of the Oscars. But next we'll take a look at spring sports. We'll catch you up on how things look for golf, baseball, softball, and tennis teams. So stick around and we'll be right back. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <laughs> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are.
What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? Welcome back to Sports on GC360. I'm Angela Morian. And I'm Sam Jones. Angela and I will bring you all the sports action around Milledgeville this semester. It's that time of year when winter sports wind down and spring sports start to gear up. Basketball team lost last night at Lander, but both teams do have something to feel good about when they get into the tournament. On senior night against Clayton State last Wednesday, both the men and women's programs clinched spots in the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. The celebrations were bittersweet though for the men's team, as senior guard Ryan Blumenthal is out for the rest of the season after a hard fall to the floor resulted in a broken collarbone. Blumenthal averaged 8.6 points per game this season, and the Bobcats know they have big shoes to fill without him. Yeah, it's a tough one anytime anybody uh you lose somebody with an injury when you don't expect it, uh, but it's a team thing. A team has to step up. It's not just one player has to step up and fill in. I think he's been averaging 11 points a game the last five games. It's not just one player has to step up and contribute that way. Uh, it's going to have to be a team collectiveness, uh, but you, your first instinct would be the seniors have to just step it up a little bit more. Even without Blumenthal, the Bobcats still feel confident heading into the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. Meanwhile, the women are limping into the tournament, struggling to put together wins. However, the Bobcats and leading scorer and rebounder Kadisha Gibbs are optimistic about their tournament chances after two straight years of reaching the Peach Belt Conference tournament title game. What mainly affects us the most is how we come out because we usually finish pretty strong. So we just have to change our mindset and how we start a game and make sure it's how we finish it. Good luck to both teams in the tournament as they both travel to Lander this Saturday for the quarterfinal round. As one for sport finishes, others begin. Sam, you've been sizing up the spring teams. How do they look? I have been. Softball is looking excellent right now, guys. 13-2 and two to start the year. Marissa Boyette and Carla Lewis on the mound for the Bobcats have been fantastic. Yeah, and baseball had a rough start being swept by number one Tampa for the first series, but they're trying to come back with a, a victory, their most recent victory, uh, against Flagler, so yeah. Whole lot of spring sports going on. Let's see what's on tap for the spring sports. Spring sports are in full swing at Georgia College. Bobcat Golf began their 2016 campaign on a low note, finishing tied for last place at the Matlock Collegiate Classic in Lakeland, Florida. Redshirt senior David Sullivan was the low score for interim head coach Pat Garrett's Bobcats, finishing 45th in the 75 golfer field. Georgia College baseball began their year against stiff competition. Coach Tom Cardi's squad, with 23 new players in tow, faced the defending NCAA Division II national champions and preseason number one University of Tampa Spartans to open the season. The Spartans swept the Bobcats in their first series of the year, but the Bobcats would rebound a week later, doing a little spring cleaning of their own, sweeping Albany State University in a three-game series. The Bobcats dropped another contest midweek at Valdosta State and lost their next two at home to Flagler College in the first PBC series of the year. However, the Bobcats were able to pick up a win on Sunday in the third game of the series and afterward, we spoke to Bobcat head coach Tom Cardi about his team's difficult start. Yeah, yeah, we're relying heavily on guys to return and uh, you know, those guys, if they got a little bit of a slow start, you're, you're waiting for the team to gel and it's going to take some time. Uh, but you know, 10 games in now, hopefully we got it figured out. 
It's been a mixed bag so far for Georgia College Tennis. The men are now 2-3 and three on the year after running into traditional tennis power Armstrong State on Sunday in Savannah. The Bobcats have looked sharp though in two wins, knocking off Flagler College 5-4 and sweeping Morehouse 9-0. It's been a similar story so far on the women's side of the net. The Bobcats won their first matchup of the year at Bernal University, but dropped their next three contests, all by a score of 7-2. GC came back in a big way last weekend, though, demolishing conference foe Montevallo 9-0 and beating Clayton State 8-1 the next day in Milledgeville. The Queens of Bobcat Athletics have had a stellar start to the 2016 year. The ninth-ranked Georgia College softball team, fresh off an NCAA Super Regional appearance last year, have dazzled in 15 games so far this season. Thanks to outstanding performances from Bobcat aces Marissa Boyette and Carly Lewis, the Bobcats have cruised to a 13-2 record, beating Belmont Abbey College and King University over the weekend. With her team firing on all cylinders, Coach Jamie Gordecki says she's pleased with her squad start. I'm doing well. Uh, can't complain, obviously. Um, uh, we still have lots of things we're working on. and. Um, but we're getting there. We've got a big weekend coming up, good region uh, competition, so uh, looking forward to it. Bobcat softball is back in action Saturday as the team travels up to Young Harris for a doubleheader. ...ahead, including a look behind the scenes of tasing being done to Georgia College students. Check this out, and we'll explain. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. A number of GC students did just that as part of the biannual Student Police Academy. GC 360's Drew Blankenbeckler was there with his camera for this sting operation. Uh. <laughs> These students have volunteered to be tased. They are taking a police development course offered at Georgia College. We are going to do some drills and everybody's to carry a taser, it is required that you first get tased yourself. The class learned the proper use of a taser, and one by one, each student felt the effect of the gun. It feels like a truck's hitting you. This is one of the only police training courses offered to college students in Georgia. I mean, honestly, I'm just glad it's over with. After completing this course, students walk out with a taser certification and a story to tell. For GC360, I'm Drew Blankenbeckler. That's it for news here at GC360. When we're not on air, we keep you up to date on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'm Cole Rogers. And I'm Jessica Vickers. We'll see you again next week on GC360, where news comes full circle.